all right hi everyone so in this video we'll be talking about the interview question asked by infosys uh, from a 3.1 year of experience developer and these are the questions i'm going to cover okay if you just need the question i'm going to put this in the description as well as in the first campaign comment and you can take it from there and you can practice you can see the difficulty level it is very important to understand the intention why we are creating these kind of videos the intention is to explain you the level of difficulty on the company basis every interviewer is different so obviously the questions are not going to get repeated or some questions might get repeated if they are theoretical but every interviewer has a different way to take interview okay but if you understand the overall difficulty level of a company you get an idea about how uh, much preparation you need or where you are currently versus what kind of questions they are asking okay so these are the questions just nine questions we'll be covering and we'll see what we can cover practically what we can cover theoretically okay so first question obviously was about the introduction and uh, tell me about your current experience uh, what did you do in these 3.1 years what was uh, what are the areas where you have worked in the salesforce domain and then there was a question about explain your latest lwc project and explain in brief when interviewer asks these kind of questions they are setting up the tone for you on what they want from you or most of the time interviewer start with some very basic question to set up the tone and then they go with the thing which they need from you okay so this was more on the in uh, more on the lwc side so interviewer directly jumped on to the project of lwc by by the project explanation he will get to know he or she will get to know that what kind of projects you have worked on and what kind of lwc components you have created and based on that he can judge on whether you are a good fit for them or not whenever not just lwc whenever you get these kind of questions it is very important then you ex that you explain it with the uh, framework known as what uh, how and uh, why okay so typically we start with what we did okay then we start with why we did and then we go on to explain how we did it okay that's a framework what how and why what we did will explain okay let's say i was working on an lwc project where we created a reusable component to display a data table okay irrespective of object irrespective of the fields we'll have to create a generic lwc component which will display the data table now objects and field level information will be passed by let's say the parent component okay where we are going to put this generic component or will be passed by the page where we are going to put this particular component so this was what why we did it because we have so many lwc component where we need to display uh, them in the data table format and we were creating a lot of similar looking code we were creating a lot of code which was duplicate code so remove that duplicacy improve the reusability we created this component then third part will be how you did it so let's say you use the lightning data table tag and then how you pass the object name how you pass the field name let's say you store them in the custom metadata and from there you are doing it or whatever mechanism you follow to build that then you explain that so remember the framework okay what why and how that's the framework you are going to use to explain your project or whenever they ask you to explain something uh, theoretical yet you want to provide some context on it in a structured format okay so remember that then third question was uh, about how to merge two arrays and result should be uh, put in the array result and this was about to implement the logic in the lwc context okay so this was more of a practical questions interviewer must have asked him to explain uh, share the screen and do that okay so that was about that if uh, and and then the next question was also about this similar so uh, because it was practical let's try to do it practically uh, let me go to the inspector and from there let's go to the developer tool and go to console log okay let's try to do it uh, practically so let's create a array let's call it const array one is equals to let's say hit and okay. 
let's say const array two is equals to proof and then let's create a const array three which will be the mixture or the combined combination of array one and array two so i am using the spread operator here and with the help of spread operator i am going to merge them so i will go do console.log and then based on that i am going to put the array three okay and if i do that i will get the combined array okay there are array methods as well push and all those things but spread operator is the best way to do this thing so try to do it with the spread operator i'll try to attach uh, the reference material for for this if you want to learn more on this but spread operator is a good way so now the next question is consider there uh, there is a two array array a and array b which contains multiple objects into it now get merge both array into array result okay so same same example we'll have to use but this time we'll have to make sure that instead of strings they have the arrays in it okay so let's again try to go to developer console and try to create these array okay so let's create the array const array one and this time you know that they have objects in it okay so we will have objects in it let's say id is equal to one and name is equals to this object will have two property one is uh, one is id other one is name and we'll have two elements in the array one okay let's say id is equals to two name is equals to <coughs> shivangi this time all right and then we'll create another array array two and this time it will have let's say just one element so id is equals to three and name is equals to let's say dhruv okay now i am going to create another const array three and i am going to merge it okay so because it is array we'll use the big brackets and we'll call it spread operator array one and spread operator array two okay we'll go and do the console.log on array three and we'll see if we are getting the result or not okay so let's see we've got the three elements in it all three are getting displayed so even if it is uh, the objects in it it will display okay so that's how we are going to do it now the next question is consider there are two objects obj a and obj b obj a has two elements uh, obj a has uh, an object uh, which has two properties a b values one and two and then c b and c which has uh, value three and four now if we use we will have uh, if we use the spread operator we will have to will have the a b and c in the combined object okay and the value of b will be the value of three because b b is common in both these objects when we merge it we'll get the value three which is the latest value of it if you try to do it with the merge uh, with the spread operator so it is also possible it just that uh, it will not hold b twice it will remove it and when uh, you'll see it you'll have three properties a b and c and the value of b will be three so you can try to implement it on your own and that's how you are going to do that okay or if you want me i can also do that let's do const obj one equals to let's say a has value one and b has value two similarly there is another const obj two and b has value 
थ्री एंड सी हैज वैल्यू फोर ओके ना लेट्स क्रिएट अ कॉन्स्ट ओ बी जे थ्री एंड वाई एम डूइंग इट एज अ सेपरेट वेरिएबल इज बिकॉज टू मेक इट क्लीनर ओके ओ बी जे वन एंड ओ बी जे टू ओके now if i go and put a console dot log in it we will have obj3 and we'll see the outcome you can see the value of b is 3 that's what i was trying to explain that uh, it will not have 2b it will just have 1b because uh, it's a unique key and then value will be uh, whatever value you have provided last okay so that's how we are going to merge the objects as friends between null versus undefined and double equals to and triple equals to okay and then this was also asked to implement in the js code so <clears throat> this was also a practical question okay so to tell you the difference between null and undefined let me create a variable let a and just console it and if i show you the result it will be undefined basically we have declared a variable but have not defined a value okay so that is why we are getting undefined as a result now to show you the other one which is null let me create another variable let b is equals to null i am defining a null value to it and then let me console it and the result of this is coming as null okay so here we have purposefully declared it as null null also means that there is no value and undefined also means that there is no value we have not defined it yet but null in case of null we have defined purposefully defined a null value to understand the difference of these two if you console dot log and write type of a and console dot log if you write type of b okay so to understand the difference between this if you type the console dot log type of a and type of b you will see first one a which is undefined is giving type as undefined whereas the second one type of b is giving object as a result so null is an object in javascript that is what you need to remember also to tell you the difference between the uh, 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 double equals to and triple equals to if you write a is equals to b then you will get true as a result because they both have they both are empty value so they are same as per javascript because double equals to is a loosely coupled uh, equalization operator whereas if you write a triple equals to b then you will get false as a result because in triple equals to not just the value but also the type of value will be checked and even if the type is not same then it will not give true as a result and they it will treat these two as a different value so whenever you have to um, do something in the if else statement use these triple equals to whenever you want to make double sure that you are checking the same value okay so that's what the interviewer was expecting all right so the next question is write dynamic sockle query and explain what is sockle injection attack and how to write it this was um, again a practical question so you can see that most of the questions are practical question here interviewer was expecting person to write a dynamic sockle query and then explain how sockle injection attack happens okay so let me copy a query for you all right sorry this is a query let's say if you are able to see this 
this is the query where let's say this industry filter is coming from um, let's say any other class or user is passing this value okay so it's a string and then we are doing a uh, we are creating a query string in the query string we are using the single quotes and uh, uh, then using the industry filter to get the value of it okay and then we are doing the value this will work perfectly fine if the user provides the correct value but let's say if user provides something like this in case of industry filter if user provides like this or name equals to blank now if you replace this line with this here you will see that there is a risk that now it can give you all the accounts in return because let's say if this is not a correct value then it will go to or and in the or name is equals to blank none of the account will have the name as blank so there is a risk that the attacker will try to play with your input variable and maybe purposefully provide a wrong input variable and with that they might be able to hack your whole system whole whole account data which is your client data so there is a risk of it so you can use the uh, escape single quotes to avoid this when you create you can use the uh, the escape single quote and then use that uh, uh, user variable in that case you will not be able to pass any of the wrong input the way it is doing so that's what interviews was expecting you to explain in the interview okay and then we have a question on why we use connected callback in lwc i have created multiple videos on it connected callback we use whenever uh, see understand by the time of the connected callback your component is in the page so you can do the initial data fetch or if you want to fetch the data from apex whenever your page loads you can do that so if you want to fetch data from apex also that can be done more like an init uh, we used to have in the uh, or a components you can load data in your lwc component from apex or from somewhere else also so connected callback will be used for that purpose there are other lifecycle hooks as well like the uh, uh, rendered callback like the disconnect callback like the error callback but what i want from you all is when you get this question try to explain it in the proper manner uh, mounting phase unmounting phase and error phase then in the mounting phase constructor connected callback explain the render method as well okay and um, uh, explain the render method rendered callback then explain the disconnect callback how and when you use disconnect callback practical implementation is very important and then explain the error callback when uh, that happens and how do we uh, use it okay so they they see everybody knows the theory of it if you also add a flavor of practical implementation then you will be able to make most impact out of your answer okay all right then the last last question is suppose there is a field rating exist on account object user in in the org does not have update access on that rating field there is a trigger written on account and that updates the rating field now what will happen when trigger gets executed by default triggers run in the system mode so even if user does not have access to this rating field that field will get updated if you don't want that thing to happen you will have to apply some field level security and need to make sure that uh, uh, you do the additional thing but by default trigger will update the rating field because it is running in the system mode and rating will get updated as per what is written in the code so these were the basic questions in this interview uh, interview was fairly uh, advanced not the typical infosys interview in my opinion uh, it was more towards the practical implementation and uh, uh, it is it is a difficult interview for a 3.1 year because uh, interviewer started putting you under pressure the moment uh, you explained your lwc project so uh, there were not many freebies available uh, they did not ask more theoretical questions and uh, uh, focus was more on the practical Im implementation so try to practice as much as you can and i'll see you in the next video thank you